you laughing at? It's an amusing crouching position. Crouch! Oh, we've got crouch. <laughs> Let's see someone there then. Ah, oh, it covers fairly well, doesn't it? Yeah, perfect. That's it. So just yeah. covers well in one coat. Brilliant. A battleship grey, everybody's favourite boat colour. Nice well hi all, I'm Tony, this is SV Tapatia and we are, as you may well know, building a cruising sailboat. And if you watched the last week's video, you will be aware that um, we have a launch date. So the building of this vessel is getting very, very close to being done. Uh, our launch date is the 27th of July which means that uh, we're pushing now very hard to, to get her ready to go in the water. Uh, at the end of last week's video and the start of this week's video, the state of play was that in terms of below the water line on the boat, we had to get a couple of coats of a vinyl bonding on there that, that forms a bond between the epoxy primer sealer and the anti-fouling. A couple of coats of that and then we need a couple of coats of anti-fouling. We have got to get the propeller on and the zinc anodes on, and that's it for below the waterline. Um, in terms of the rest of the boat, we have to prepare the masts. The masts are finished, but, but the mast head fittings need to go on there. The running rigging needs to go on. There's a radar reflector to go on, and the mast head fittings also have the VHF, AIS antenna on there and a top light on there. So. That needs to be done. And that really is it for essentials. There's a couple of other things that I would like to get done if I can, but those are the essentials. And what you've just seen is us getting the vinyl primer on. So that's uh, coated, it's a lovely battleship gray, and she's ready for the final coats of underwater paint. mistake of using the wrong antenna then I ended up cutting that end off but I bought a new one so we'll run a new one up there. So a bit of luck when I got that other end that's come through. Let's check. So we're here doing the masthead fittings. We did this one first on the four mast, VHF and AIS antenna on there combined. Uh, we put a new VHF cable up the middle because I didn't like the way I'd done it before. So I changed it now for one that has a, the, the pre-made ends on each end and it's hooked up nicely and it's connected at this end. Obviously when the mast goes in I've got to connect the bottom. And then this is the main mast and we've just fitted this one uh, and run the cable for the uh, steaming light and anchor light up through there. And a bit of a palaver getting that up but we eventually got it through. It's a long mast and uh, yeah, and yeah, we got it through, that's the important thing. And now I've just got to wire it up, I've got a couple of water type, type glands and then I've got to wire it up to the, the connector here for the top light. Getting on well.
which is looking lovely. So that's the, the masted fittings on and the, the VHF antenna, which as I said, doubles as AIS uh, sender um, and receiver, of course. Um, that's all in place and the top light done. And then as you've just seen, we've got the first coat of antifouling on. And this is the, the antifoul that we're using. It's Hempel Hard Racing. Um, well, the racing bit doesn't, <laughs> doesn't bother me at all. But, but what I like about it, we use this same antifouling on Hazel's boat. And it's a lovely hard finish. Uh, fairly smooth as well. So um, I really liked it. And, and she also hasn't had that much growth it is now two years or coming up two years when we since we antifouled her boat and there's not that much growth growth on it so it's, it's really you know, I'm quite pleased with it it's quite good stuff so use that two and a half liters per coat mind you which is as you can imagine not particularly cheap um, but there we go needs to be done needs to be done needs to be done well doesn't it uh, it's on first coat now this weekend, I've, I've, it's my dad's 90th birthday, basically, so I'm off to England tomorrow uh, for a sort of long weekend. Uh, and the launch date, as I said, 27th of May, is next week on Thursday. So um, I'll be back. It'll be Tuesday the time I get back up to the boat. So I need to, needed to get her to a state where you know, I can get it ready for launch in a couple of days from there. And we are there now, I'm pleased. We've got the antifoul, one coat to go, prop and zincs won't take much, won't take long. Masthead fittings are on, we've just got to do the running rigging. I've got all of that, it's ready to go. So we're pretty, you know, I'm confident that we can do it in the little bit of time we've got left. So it's going well. But there is something that has been concerning me a bit and, and uh, obviously concerns the guys at the marina there a bit as well because they've spoken to me about it a couple of times now. And that is um, the mass, how to attach the crane to the mass. You know, the mass haven't got any spreaders, so it's just a, a, a smooth tapered pole. And uh, that attachment needs a bit of thought, doesn't it? And I even put a, I put a question into the Junk, junk Rig Association a forum asking for tips and got a, <laughs> a bit of a range of different answers but but some good food food for thought there um, and one of the things I've thought since is that um, the forward mast has the windless attachment around the bottom that's still to go on something I didn't mention earlier but it's just a case of bolting it on it's all made and done but that attaches around and that's something that should be secure enough to fix a rope going up the mast that the crane could uh, lift from if, if there was a rope going from that around you know with a bowling around the mast higher up so that it gave the right attachment point the mast could be lifted from that i think and um along the way just to, to get the train of thought here also when we come to rig the boat one of the things each sail has is some lazy jacks or, or often called topping lifts but I mean, they're basically lazy jacks as, as you get on a Bermuda um, and most of the lines are going to come back to the cockpit but I don't want everything I don't want millions of lines in the cockpit and I don't think I'm going to be adjusting I won't be adjusting the lazy jacks very often so I'm going to put cleats at the mast for the lazy jack lines and they could fit nicely onto that stainless fitting that the windlass also fits to. Um, so that got me thinking that I could also make a similar thing, a stainless fitting, that goes around the main mast and would also have the two cleats for the lazy jacks on it. Um, and would also, if it's a good tight fit onto the mast, which it would need to be, would also serve as an attachment point for the crane and, and certainly help in that respect. So I started fabricating something for that. And this is how far I've got. And at the moment, I'm a bit undecided whether to just make it a split ring. It's going to have a couple of pieces coming up here and some bolts going through to tighten it onto the mast. Uh, one ring or whether to take it in half and two halves to form the ring. Um, 
I should make my mind up very soon, that's for sure. But that's as far as we've got with that. And that's what it's all about. So they, they just need welding on there. do the job and I'd be able to put the cleats somewhere wherever the right positions are in there and that obviously would some bolts through the holes pull in and tighten up on the mast well there we go that's it for this week uh, thank you for watching. As ever, a massive thank you to the lovely people who support us on Patreon, via PayPal, or even here via the, the super thanks here on YouTube. Um, I believe we're on target. I certainly do. Below the waterline is no biggie now. One more coat of antifoul and prop and, and zincs. Um, and the big thing is, is getting the mass ready. And, and I do believe that... that that we'll get that done. I, I, I don't doubt it, in fact. So, uh, next week is massive, absolutely massive. You know, it's about thinking through. I've got, <laughs> I haven't forgotten anything and seeing that, that we get it done in time, what does need doing. Um, and uh, we'll be in the water very soon. Exciting times. See you next time.